Hello everyone, this will be a video about how to improvise on the chords of the standard Just Friends. And I know it looks very different from my usual videos. The reason is we have an incredible heat wave here in the Netherlands. It's the hottest it has ever been since people started recording temperatures. And I've tried several times to do it the normal way, the windows closed, controlled lighting, lots of lights on me. But it just gets so hot that I, I can't even last 10 minutes. So now the windows are open. Just one little light to light the guitar, that's it. And this is doable. So let's just get started. I uploaded a backing track for this tune the day before yesterday, and I will be using the backing track to demonstrate concepts. And if you want to practice with the backing track, you can do so because there will be a link in the description. So let's get started with the first five bars. Start with B flat six or B flat major seven, same thing. For two bars, and then it's one bar B flat minor seven, one bar of E flat seven, resolving to F. So uh, in a rhythm, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. So the tune is an F, so it starts on the four chord. So on B flat, I would just play lines that are based around a B flat major seven arpeggio. Stuff like that. Then we're gonna go to the four minor chord, which would be B flat minor six. But in Just Friends, we're gonna play B flat minor seven to six. But you can ignore the B flat minor seven if you want and just play your B flat minor phrases, both B flat minor six or B flat minor seven, which for me would translate into D flat major. So there's an easy trick there. You can play B flat major seven to D flat major seven. So you can basically repeat the same idea, um, just shift up three frets. So let me experiment a little bit with the sound going from B flat major to B flat minor, either B flat minor six sound or a D flat major seven sound. And I made a little loop. Um, you're gonna hear two bars B flat, and then B flat minor seven, E flat seven, and then two bars of F. And then it's gonna loop back again. Here we go. That works great, B flat major to B flat minor. Another option would be to really think E flat seven for two bars. So in that case, I would either think about the E flat uh, bebop scale, right? Maybe uh, play that down and then play D flat major seven up. Stuff like that, or I would think about the Gypsy Jazz 3 2 1 licks, uh, which is right, it's a 3 2 1 uh, kind of repeating pattern. I made a video about that, uh, I will link that in the description. So let's uh, explore that and let's see how that sounds. Thank you. 
another thing you could do is play E flat seven and then play a diminished arpeggio from the G. So, right, you play this sound. This is not a traditional sound in the bebop because there is this E in it, which is a strange note. But in Gypsy Jazz, we're very used to playing uh, diminished arpeggios on top of dominant chords, even if it's not the real dominant, right? The real dominant in F would be C7, but now it's E flat seven. We can still do that with the stipulation that you don't end your line on the flat nine. So we're not gonna play. Right, if we wanna do that, just end on a D flat or E flat. Or. Stuff like that, but let's see what that sounds like. fourth option would be to play a quick C7 altered before you go to the F. So you play some kind of B flat major to any of the other options. Let's say we're going to play B flat minor. And now right before we switch to F, we're going to play some C7 altered line. So why does this work? It's because um, the four minor chord is the same as the five altered chords. I know that sounds confusing, but uh, I'll explain it. So when you have B flat minor, so let's just play a B flat minor, an arpeggio like this, right? B flat minor arpeggio. If we put a C in the bass, what do we get? We get a sus chord with a flat nine. So a sus chord means there is an F instead of an E, right? And the, the flat nine is the D flat. This is a sus flat nine chord. And C7 sus flat nine is a sound which works really well on C7 altered. So now you can see that B flat minor and C7 altered in the key of F are basically the same thing. So you could actually play C7 altered over the whole thing, but I would recommend to do it in the fourth bar, not in the third bar, especially because in the third bar, we still have B flat minor seven, it's nicer to to play some D flat major seven over that, for instance. And then play C7 altered. So let's explore playing B flat major to uh, B flat minor seven or E flat seven or B flat minor six to C7 altered in the fourth bar resolving to F. I think that is a really good sounding option which brings great variety. So you don't have to play B flat major to B flat minor every course. So let's continue on with the next four bars. So we get F, two bars, and then we get A flat minor seven, D flat seven to G minor. Now some people don't like the A flat minor seven, D flat seven, they play G sharp diminished. So you would get the F, and they play G sharp diminished. And there's many versions that have that. The West Montgomery version has that. There's a version with Julian Lodge who plays it like that. Uh, Barry Green plays it like that. And it's fine. It also works with the, the theme. But for me, it's kind of a cop-out. I mean, if you play a diminished chord there, the song becomes very standard because that kind of change like F, G sharp diminished to G minor is kind of a normal change. It's a very functional change. It's easy to play over. You could just play F. <laughs> And then play some kind of E7 altered, right? That that works always works great. You play E7 altered over e, uh, A flat diminished in the key of F. So that becomes very easy to do, especially because you do it a lot. 
Now, if you do A flat minus seven, D flat seven, those are kind of odd changes in the key of F. So the tune becomes more special. And also, when I was listening to the vocal recordings, like the recordings that Sinatra made, for instance, with Nelson Riddle arrangement, they're not playing the diminished chord. Um, he plays only the five chords, so only D flat seven. So you get F6, D flat seven, which is basically the same thing as A flat minus seven, D flat seven. And I assume that uh, the arrangers that, that worked for the great singers like Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald, Nat King Cole, that they were in contact with the composers or they did enough research and they were using the original changes. Maybe that's not true, but that's what I assume. So I left the A flat minus seven, D flat seven, which is also what Charter Parker is playing, uh, what Sonny Stitt is playing with Barry Harris. So I would, I would keep that. So what are we gonna play on those chords? So what you could do is just do the same thing as in the first four bars, B flat minus seven, E flat seven, but just uh, two frets down. So you play A flat minus six, or uh, A flat minor seven, so that would be B major seven. Play D flat seven, B bop skill. Uh, the three, two, one licks for D flat seven. Now what I also did is I transcribed some great phrases played by bebop players. So for instance, we have this Charlie Parker phrase. And I will make another video tomorrow going over the phrases I transcribed from Charlie Parker for this part, especially for my patrons. So if you want to see that video, uh, you got to join my Patreon. And I will make that video for uh, the highest level patrons. Um, and there's some great stuff there. You can play that, those kind of stuff. It's all based on the bebop scale though. So that's what I would do. I would treat it the same as the B flat minor seven, E flat seven. The only thing I wouldn't do is play an altered chord on top of it. So uh, on E flat seven, we're, we're playing C seven altered. So then you say, well, now, now you would be playing B flat seven altered, but that makes no sense because we're not resolving to a one chord. We're going to G minor, we're going chromatically down. So I would treat it as its own thing as as a kind of, I call it a line stopper. It's something that is not functional. You cannot play from those changes to the next ones. Well, you could do it. You could connect them in some way, but it won't resolve. What you could do to connect it is be early with the G minor, right? So if you play some line for uh, D flat seven and you're still on the fourth bar, you already go to G minor to anticipate. So I'm gonna make a loop of those bars and I'll demonstrate. So I made the loop starting one bar before the F, so on the E flat seven still. I did that so we always have a one bar pre-roll. And then we get F, two bars, to A flat minor, D flat seven, and then G minor, C seven. So let's explore some of the options. I'll start with some bebop uh, scale lines. So right there I did a, a gypsy jazz thing. That's a real gypsy jazz phrase for D flat seven. That's a jungle thing. That's really nice to play with the variations that you can do it. Or let me explore some lines with that in it. Another option would be to play the D flat seven three two one stuff. That's stuff, right? I don't have to demonstrate. Or of course, just play real A flat minor stuff. So now let me play the first eight bars. So from the beginning until here.
let's continue. The next bars are pretty easy. G minor one bar, C7 one bar, and then A minor, D minor. Now it might seem a little bit unusual, but it isn't. In the Charter Parker version, it's just G minor, C7, F two bars. So it's just a two, five, one. And that's the changes that are supposed to be there. Just D. A lot of people play a weird thing. They play like G minor, C7, and then they play two, five to D minor. But that doesn't really fit with the theme, with the, the melody of this tune. If you want to do that, then you have to actually change the theme, because the theme is... Right? E, C, E, C, that doesn't fit on A7. For instance, there is a version of Dexter Gordon where he changed the theme to... Which is the theme the second time around. The second time, yeah, we do have the E half diminished to A7, but the first time, we don't. We just have a 2 of one to F. Now, to make it a little bit more interesting, I have chosen what Sonny Stitt does, and they do like 2, 5, and then they go 3, 6. Now, 3 and 6 are just substitutes for 1. That's something to remember. So if you're in the key of F, A minor is also F, and D minor is also F. You won't change your lines. So just think F. Just think a 2, 5, 1 to F. Now your lines will sound very colorful because the backing is going to do A minor to the D minor. So um, it's, it's even more interesting. So let me play those four bars and you can hear what it would sound like if I just played 2, 5, 1, but the resolution in the rhythm section is not to F, but to A minor, D minor. The loop starts a bar earlier again. So it starts on D flat 7 to have a pre-roll. And then it goes G minor, C minor, A minor, D minor, and then it loops back again. Right, I'm just playing 251 licks here, and um, I have many videos about 251 licks. I will link one such video in the description, but any 251 lick will work. Then we're gonna go to G7, two bars, to C7, two bars, or you could play D minor, G7, G minor, C7, but I'm just thinking G7, C7. And then the fourth bar is actually gonna be F7. So, because it starts on the four chord, this tune, uh, we have this weird F7 chord uh, to go back to the four chord in the beginning. But what I'm thinking is, I'm just thinking G7 and then C7. I'm just thinking going to F because that's the main key. And then at the last moment, the last second in the last bar, I'll, I'll play a quick F7 to go back to B flat. And the way I do that is just play some kind of E flat note in that fourth bar. So let's say we have C7. And I'm on F, and I'll play, right, to go, to make clear it's F7. Or maybe do, let's see. Right, there's the uh, E flat. So I'm not thinking about the B flat in the distance, because that's confusing. We are in the key of F, so we have to focus on F. I'm gonna play G7, two bars, you can do whatever you wanna do on G7. Three to one licks, or you could even play. Is D flat uh, augmented or some D minor stuff? To C seven F F seven. So let me play that part in a loop. Again, starts a bar early, and the resolution to B flat will also be there. So you can hear what it sounds like. But I'm not thinking about the B flat, I'm thinking about F.
Okay, the second half starts the same, so we don't have to do that. B flat, B flat minor, E flat, F, A flat minor, D flat. But now we get G minor, C7, now we do get the 2 5 to D minor. So in that case, I would just think uh, 2 5 to F. Now A7 altered, D minor. And then we get G7, C7, F. So that's just 2 5 to F again, but now the 2 is a 5 chord, G7. So you can either do G7. I would do G7 and then some kind of altered sound on C7. Or what you could do, which makes it very easy, you could think F major 7 on top of the G7. So then you're playing kind of a D minor sound. And then C7 to F. So then it's basically going to become 1, 5, 1, even though the chords underneath it will be G7. That sounds great too. So let me loop that part, the part from G minor, C7, then a 2, 5 to D minor, and then G7, C7, F. The loop starts one bar before the 2 5 in F. So again, I'm just playing some kind of 2 5 to F, but then don't resolve to F. Play a 2 5 to D minor by playing A7 altered. So you could do or do an octatonic or play a B flat minor. Again, all these lines they come from my other videos. I have many videos with all these lines, they're in some kind of video. And it's not important to play these lines exactly. Just Go look at my other videos and, and take lines and apply them on Just Friends. I'm just explaining what I'm thinking. And then I'm doing G7, C7, F by playing either those chords exactly. Or by playing F major 7, C7. So let me play a complete solo with all of this, um, maybe like two choruses to end the video and see if you can recognize what it is that I'm doing. Thank you. 
So I hope you have some ideas on how to approach this song. And I know it's a lot of information, but this video is not meant as a thing on its own. It's meant to be viewed in conjunction with all the other videos on my channel, or at least the videos in which I show lines. Because in the end, everything I'm playing is based on transcribed lines that may have been altered over time, but the origins is always a great player like Django or Charlie Parker or Joe Pass or Sonny Rollins or any of the great players that you can think of, uh, just type in uh, the name of a great player and search on my channel and I bet you'll find a video about this player. That's it. Tomorrow I'll make a video with some really tasteful phrases for the A flat minor D flat 7 part for my highest level patrons. Uh, go check it out if you want to. If you like this video, subscribe and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.